Have you ever wondered what is the best sketchbook for me? As an artist, it may feel like an overwhelming decision. Whether you work with a wet medium like watercolor where you need paper to be able to support that wet medium, or a dry medium like pen and ink, graphite, or colored pencil, there are many different types of sketchbooks you as an artist can choose from. And like me, you may even have several different types of sketchbooks on hand. Hi, Maria here from My Art Pixie. And for the next few weeks, let's talk sketchbooks. I have several sketchbooks and some are full and some are barely used. Some are old and some are new. I have acquired them over the years. So why so many, you might ask? Each serves a different purpose. For many artists, sketchbooks support the artist's preference of medium. So whatever medium they're going to use, they're going to gravitate towards a certain uh, sketchbook that supports that medium. So what this means is paper matters. Depending on what art medium you decide to focus on as an artist will depend on what kind of sketchbook you will use. The overarching reason for a sketchbook is practice. I am a multi-passionate artist, so I have acquired several different types of sketchbooks to support my use of different art mediums so I can practice and I can get better at my skill. I separated my sketchbooks into five different categories to help you gain a better understanding of what types of sketchbooks are available. Drawing sketchbooks, specialty sketchbooks, toned sketchbooks, watercolor sketchbooks, and mixed media sketchbooks. That's a lot. So I am breaking this down into a series so that each video can really highlight each of those categories. And for today, let's focus on drawing sketchbooks. Drawing sketchbooks are perfect for any dry medium, like graphite, charcoal, soft pastels, oil pastels, colored pencils, and even pen and ink. Whether your sketchbook has sketching paper, which is a lighter weight uh, or a lighter version of drawing paper, or drawing paper, which is a little heavier, either way, the whole intent is to work with that dry medium and get a good sketch, work with multiple layers of that dry medium. Any still life that I can see, um, I can get a quick sketch with some graphite pencil. And sometimes I may not even be looking at anything. I can sketch from my memory and use that graphite pencil um, to work within my sketchbooks as well. When I talked about pen and ink, pen and ink can include uh, gel pens, um, same kind of category, but I like to work within my Zentangle um, sketchbook to work on Zentangles and doodles with my uh, pen and ink, um, which can include some of my gel pens as well. Speaking of gel pens, here is an example of one. And here's another, and this one I just love. I used my blue Uniball gel pen um, to create this monochromatic piece. Monochromatic just means that you used one color um, to create this um, piece. Drying paper is great for graphite. You can get a lot of um, shading qualities with your graphite pencil. You can use hard graphite and soft graphite to get different um, textures and um, different dark elements and soft elements. You could also work with graphite on something that you're trying to, you know, really get better at, like drawing faces or mouths or noses. 
different parts of the face and just learning the different different styles and things. Drawing sketchbooks are great for practicing your drawing skills and your drawing techniques. So let's talk about what makes drawing paper so unique. It is the paper tooth. Now all paper has paper tooth. Some papers have no paper tooth and others have a lot of paper tooth, which gives it uh, anywhere from like a smooth surface to a rough surface. The tooth is the texture of, or the surface of the paper. The paper tooth creates these grooves that are known as the high spots and the low spots. Also known as the hills and valleys of the paper. The more hills and valleys that you have, um, you tend to have a rougher uh, surface on your paper. And you take your graphite and you lay that on top of the paper. And what happens is it forms these uh, like white spots or streaks because the white, because the graphite lays on the high spots. You get a speckled textured look uh, on your graphite. Let me grab a darker um, color here. And of course I'm using my, um, my digital drawing pad, um, but just the same, just to show you, if you put on layer upon layer, it starts to compress those high spots down. And as it compresses those high spots down, um, it will show up a darker in those spots and you'll still have some speckling um, but it is decreasing that more and more so let's take a look at what i mean i grabbed my uh, pastels i'm working with sepia right now making a pear shape the harder that i press down it's creating mark making if i use the side of the pastel you can really see that speckling effect that I was talking about because the side of the pastel is creating a softer stroke across the paper. So you can really see the, the hills and valleys within the drawing. If I use the edge of the pastel, you can see that it is compressing down and making marks. Using a blending stump, I can move the pigments around without ruining the tooth and softening the edges but it also helps compress the tooth to achieve a polished finish. This is why a drawing sketchbook is so great for on-the-go practices. It's really great for a quick study, a quick drawing study, and that's why sketchbooks are so popular. They give us a safe place to practice our art. Let me know in the comments below if you love a good drawing sketchbook. And next week I will be talking about the specialty sketchbooks. Um, so be sure to come back and check it out. Until next time, bye!